Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now the last time I did a video about the UK Charge Network, I think it was in 2018. Uh, and back then it was a much fragmented and complicated and they all had different ways of accessing the networks. It was a bit of a mess really and it needed a long video just to explain to people what you needed to do to access them, apps, RFID cards, things like that. Uh, but now we're in 2021 and the charge network is very different. There are a lot more charge points, which is good. Unfortunately, it's still kind of fragmented. It's, a, it, it's unnecessarily complicated, but not as bad as it was. Things are changing and changing for the better. Contactless payments, for example, is a lot more common now, at least on rapid charges. Um, so this is effectively the updated version of that video. I'm gonna give you a list of all the apps and any RFID cards that I would suggest anyone gets. So for example, if I was saying, no, my, my, my parents, if they've just got a full EV and they said, what app should we get? What RFID card should we all, always have in the car, in the glove box? That's basically what I'm giving you here. The list of things I think everyone should have. I won't mention every single network. I'm gonna to stick to the major uh, nationwide ones. There's no point in me telling you about every regional variation will be here all week. So I will show you near the, near the end of the video what you have to do to find out A, where the charge points are and what charge point uh, network runs them, how you access them basically. It's very easy, it's very straightforward. You just need effectively an internet connection and a browser. Um, so we'll do that near the end, but for now I'll give you a list of apps and uh, RFID cards that all EV drivers should have. Yeah, maybe I should have just led with that. For anyone that is subscribed to the channel, if you're not, please do, but if anyone that is, uh, there's going to be a lot of different videos compared to normal because the half a dozen press cars I had en route over the next several weeks, of course, aren't turning up now, given the current situation, so uh, who knows what you're going to get. Right, let's start off with this now. Um, I will mention contactless first because some networks just use contactless, which is exactly what we want. That's how it should be. Well, no, that's how it should have been from day one. All these uh, charge networks that are proudly going, we are now installing uh, contactless payments on all our charge points. Yeah, you were told about this over a decade ago and you chose not to, and now you're saying like it's a positive that you're installing. No, no, you just didn't have the foresight to see what everyone else did. Anywho, rant over, I'll try not to veer off to a, <laughs> a rant through this video, but we are talking about charge networks here, so. I can't promise uh, that I won't. Uh, let's mention the, the good ones first, the ones that I would always prioritize. The best I would say, and the reviews of charge networks across the country kind of bear this out as well, is Instavolt, and I would say Osprey, which used to be called Engini, if you're unfamiliar with Osprey. Don't know why uh, they keep on rebranding themselves, the charge networks, but I don't know, who knows. Uh, yeah, Instavolt effectively, very good network, most reliable one for me and you just basically stick a contactless card on the side and plug in. Same with the Engini slash Osprey one. Uh, Shell as well, Shell Recharge, they're contactless too. Although they do have an app, I just stick with contactless and that's effectively what I'm doing here. Stick with the easiest option. If you want, get the Shell app as well as using contactless but for me, well, it's kind of unnecessary, isn't it? Uh, now a lot of BP Pulse of their network is contactless as well in terms of their rapid chargers, but not all of them are. So ultimately you're still gonna need something else. And uh, I'll come back to BP Pulse later on because they have a slightly more complicated setup than others. Um, bear with me, it, it, it's just one of those videos where it's gonna sound complicated, but ultimately it isn't that bad. Okay, right, so one thing that you will, or some things that you'll need in your EV glove box as it were, is of course a smartphone. You're not gonna get very far without one of these. Whether it's the browser, the web browser, or an actual app, I'll you know tell you that in a second, but you will need a smartphone, clearly. I would also recommend, even though you can pay with contactless with these things, to always have a debit card, a contactless payment debit card with you, because not all charge points work with Apple or Google Pay, so your phone, effectively. I think most people probably will, but 
certainly given the current situation and, and how good these are now, a lot of people are going out with just their phones. You'll need a debit card potentially as well. Righty, let's get on with the apps themselves. So uh, get your phone ready or a pen and paper or something like that. These are the ones that I would recommend sticking on your phone, ignoring the regional variations I've already mentioned. Uh, Genie Point, get their app. Uh, Ecotricity is the electric highway. You will need that as you can only access theirs via the app, which is a, a ridiculous thing. And they're all the only charge networks at the service areas, which most people call the monopoly. And they're the most unreliable network. I'm going off on a rant again, aren't I? <sighs> Calm down now. Yes, electric highway app, uh, the Pod Point app. I will put a link. Uh, sorry, a description. I will put something in the description below with this mention. So. You don't have to you know, keep rewinding the video. Um, uh, BP Pulse app as well. Go for the BP Pulse app, although you may not need it because of what I'm going to mention later on. And that's it. That is all the apps I would go for. Genie Point, the Electric Highway or Ecotricities, uh, Podpoint and BP Pulse. The rest can either be accessed via a web browser on your phone, you know, you scan a QR code or something, or uh, it's contactless. There are a couple of caveats to that in RFID card world, but I'll get to them again in a second. Bear with me. First, I'll mention the BP Pulse system because they have two ways of accessing their network. A pay-as-you-go way, which would be like contactless or via their app, because not all of their chargers use contactless. Uh, and they also have a membership. So you pay £7.85 per month, I believe it is, and then you get an RFID card as part of that membership, but you, you can also charge for cheaper. So it makes charging cheaper. So this is entirely up to you whether you think it's worth you getting BPPulse membership or not. The RFID card makes things simpler. It always does. Genie Point have an RFID card option and it only costs you nine pounds. I would probably go for that if you're gonna use Genie Point even vaguely um, regularly. But in terms of BP Pulse you have to pay effectively for the RFID card on a monthly basis because it's part of the membership. You get cheaper charging, so if you do a lot of charging on BP Pulse, it pays for itself. It might even be financially beneficial to become a member. If you're only gonna use BP Pulse less than two or three times a month, it's probably worth sticking with just using the app. So that's up to you whether or not you think it's worth it or not. Now on to the RFID cards, which is a little bit un more complicated than it needs to be. There's only really one that I would suggest you get beyond the BP Pulse one I've already mentioned uh, and the optional Genie Point one. Uh, there's two networks. One is called Charge Your Car and one is called Charge Place Scotland. They're basically the same network. If you have an RFID card for Charge Your Car, it works in Scotland. If you have a Charge Place Scotland card, it works on the Charge Your Car network. So don't get them both, basically. You only need one. It's £20 for a year for the RFID card, and then that gives you access to it. And you have to use their RFID card. I would not recommend using the online web version uh, for Charge Play Scotland, for example, and I go to Scotland reasonably often because it's just not reliable enough. It's as reliable as a politician's guesstimate. So I would... Definitely get the RFID card if you go anywhere near Scotland. Um, what I'd suggest is to just get it anyway. Spend £20, even if you don't think you might use it, a charge to your car or charge play Scotland, because at least for the first 12 months, it's there. You never know what's going to happen. And let's face it, if you're spending 25, 30, 40, 50 grand on a car, £20 not going to make a big deal, is it? So get the card, stick it in your glove box, and if, if after 12 months when it expires, you didn't use it, just don't renew it. Uh, but that is the only real RFID card beyond the optional membership, if you choose to go to it, that I would probably recommend you go for. As I said, the Genie Point, you can just use their app. The RFID card is probably worth doing for £9. I think that's a one-off £9 as well. So it, it, again, an RFID would be always easier than an app or a web interface. Oh, actually, sorry, I've missed another one. Uh, Northern Ireland have a network called eCarney or maybe eCarNI. Uh, I've, I've never used them, I'll fully admit that, and that is via RFID card. So I guess if you're going to or you live in Northern Ireland, you're gonna need that one. 
A lot of other ones that I haven't mentioned, uh, Ionity, for example, all you need is a smartphone. You can do it all on the phone using the web browser, you know, you scan a QR code sort of thing. So you don't need an app, you don't need anything, anything specific other than a device that can use the internet. Uh, so that's what a lot of them do as well. Personally, contactless is always my preference. I would choose that for ease of use over a cheaper network. Which is why I would always say that if you're going somewhere and there are two or three options, you know, you can say, well, I could use that network or that network or another network or some, you know, they're all in close proximity. I would go for uh, InstaVault first over any other and then maybe Osprey. Basically, if it uses contactless, I would always go for that first because it just works then. It's also the only way we're going to get rid of the networks that refuse to use contactless payment on all their charges. Mm -hmm. If nobody uses them, and sometimes you don't have a choice clearly, but if nobody uses their networks and uses the other ones that do take contactless, then maybe they'll either be forced into it to survive or they'll just disappear. So that's what I would suggest. Now, the regional variations. For example, if you live in London, you're going to want Source London, which is, I believe, an RFID card. Uh, so now we're going to show you how to effectively have a look at what's in your area or an area you're visiting and what you have to do to find out what network that's on and therefore from that you can find out how you access it. Oh and if you're wondering who BP Pulse are, they used to be called Charge Master, then BP Charge Master, also known as Polar or Polar Instant. If I had their customer service record I'd probably rebrand myself every so often too. I'm doing it again aren't I? Now, when it comes to finding out what charge points are in your area, there are two websites that I would always recommend using. Uh, one is called PlugShare, so PlugShare.com. Uh, my personal preference, however, is ZapMap. So that is zap-map.com. Again, I'll put all the links in the description below if you, uh, you know, so you can go straight to it. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll assume you're not that au fait with using the internet. So basically, go to Google and search for ZapMap and it will come up straight away at zap-map.com. Click on Live Map on the top left-hand corner, and you will see this. Now, what you can see here is effectively all the charges, and it's, uh, well, there's an awful lot, isn't it? So what I want to do is effectively search for where I'm wanting to uh, visit. So let me pick the closest place to me, Skipton, that's the nearest town, and that will take me to here. I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm saying. So here we are in uh, North Yorkshire, and if I zoom in, all the purple ones are rapid chargers. So what I could do, if I click on this arrow on the left, is basically filter it by connector type. So I'm gonna click on rapid chargers. I just want to see rapid chargers, please. Okay, apply. And then what that will do is only show me the rapid chargers. See, they're all purple. There you go, so that one there. That is in Morrison's. So just click off it and then click on the other one. That is in the High Street car park. And it tells you there, see where it says Osprey, that is the, the, the network effectively that uh, that is using. If you click on that page or that part of the page, it then gives you more information. This tells me that uh, the CCS 50 kilowatt, uh, Chadamo 50 kilowatt and Type 2 is available. It won't say it's available for all networks, I should point that out. It on, uh, that map only has live data for certain networks. But basically, it tells me what type of connector they've got. This one, for example, is telling me that someone right now is using the Chadamo connector, which a, a Nissan Leaf uses, for example. What I would do then is click on the eye down below, and that will tell me all, I, all the information I need. It tells me where it is for your sat-nav, if you want to find it, what network it uses, Apple Pay, oops, <laughs> Apple Pay, uh, you can use the app, or Zap Pay, which is something ZapMap have uh, implemented now. Effectively, it accepts contactless and credit cards. That's all I need to know. That's how much they charge, and it tells me when it's open, what type of place it's in, in this case, a car park. So that, that basically gives you all the information you need. If I click on the Morrison's one, and that again, it will tell me the speed of the chargers, Type 2, Chadamo, CCS, if I click on the eye at the bottom again, the address is the Genie Point one. I can use the app or the RFID card if I have it. That tells me how much it costs me to use it and a few other details. Um, and also pay attention to the parking because sometimes you do have to pay for parking whilst you're charging. 
So it's worth reading that type of thing. Uh, another thing which I'm not going to really go into too much detail on this particular video, but what you can do with that map, if you click on the panel on the left side again, so let me just get rid of that filter for a second, is click on Route Planner. Uh, let's imagine I'm going from Skipton to, I don't know, Manchester, that'll do. Um, and click Find Route. I'm not going to go into, as I said, too much detail, but effectively I pick which one I want of two options using Google Maps. So I'll pick the one on the left that's orange, select. And what it will do is give me all of the charges within, I think it's a mile or two of that route. So if you think I need to charge on route somewhere, this will give you all your options. There are very, you can change it a lot. And again, I'm not going to go into it on this, but that's effectively how you can plan a journey as well, or if you're wanting to charge on route. So if I wanted to charge there, I'd click on that, and it would tell me that this BP Pulse one is out of service as of five minutes ago. So it's definitely worth checking on stuff like this. And that's basically it, really. Um, so Zap Map or Plusher, and that will tell you what the charge point is, what network it uses, and then once you know what network uh, the charger that you're wanting to use uses, you can then uh, find whether you need the app for it, if you haven't already got it. If it's contactless, brilliant. You don't need anything. You've already got the uh, debit card or the phone. Yeah, that's it. We're pretty much done, really. That's all I would recommend. As I said, there are regional variations. So if you live in London, Source London makes sense. Get the RFID card for that and so forth and so forth. Uh, okay, well, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe because um, I'm going to be doing like a, an ultimate guide to EV um, ownership and usage and charging. You may already know that if you're watching this after that's gone out. Um, so yeah, please do subscribe. It does help channels like mine. If you've got any questions, comments, that's what the comment section's for. I'm more than happy to answer them. It does get busy sometimes, so give me a bit of time. Um, and if you've got any rants or statements about the state of the charging network, feel free to litter the comment section with, uh, with well, we all like a good morn, don't we? Especially me. <laughs> right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.